Good morning, Bante. Good morning, Bante. Good morning. Oh. Good morning, Bante. Good morning. Ah, Chitra, your friends came yesterday. Yes, I know, Bhante. I'm so glad. He gave your message to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I met them yesterday. Yes, mm. I know. They told me. Yes, they were going to see you. It is Haram. Seva. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Today, we are going to speak on uh, what do you call persons and fetters. This uh, uh, is little uh, uh, perhaps some little difficult to understand for most people. But I try to make it as simple as possible, as I understand. So, even though the, this teaching, or this particular area of teaching, as I mentioned at the beginning of this year, since you have been practicing uh, meditation and listening to Dhamma talks uh, given by various uh, uh, monks and lay people, perhaps. Uh, I assume that you have some uh, knowledge of Dhamma to understand this. Uh, and I try to make it uh, simple. With this uh, introduction, uh, let me start the uh, talk. This you find, as I mentioned in the past, in uh, Anguttara Nikaya. Anguttara Nikaya, fourth section, Chatukka Nipata. And they are, this is called Puggala. Uh, let me say only in English to save time. Buddha said, uh, because there are these four kinds of persons found existing in the world. What for? Here, yeah, because some person has not abandoned the lower fetters the fetters of obtaining rebirth or the fetters for obtaining existence. Now you can see the words rebirth and existence. Two words. Uh, then second is uh, some other person has abandoned the lower fetters but not the fetters for obtaining rebirth or fetters for obtaining existence. Second person. Third person is still another person has abandoned the lower fetters 
and the fetus for obtaining rebirth, but not the fetus for obtaining existence. You see, uh, the fetus for rebirth and existence. And then the fourth person is still another person has abandoned the lower fetus, the fetus for ab uh, obtaining rebirth and the fetus for obtaining existence. This person is still, uh, this person has abandoned lower fetus, the fetus for obtaining rebirth and the fetus for obtaining existence. When you hear the word fetus, <clears throat> I hope it rings the bell of uh, Sangyojana. Sangyojana. Ten of them are mentioned. Here, uh, this in interprets it differently. So the Buddha. Uh, you know, after giving introduction, he takes each each person and explains some in some detail what kind of person has not abandoned the lower fetus, the fetus for obtaining rebirth, or the fetus for existence, obtaining existence. That person is called once returner. Sakadagami, second stage of enlightenment. This person has not abandoned the lower fetus, the fetus obtaining rebirth, or the fetus for obtaining existence. Now, uh, this is uh, although the the what do you call the once returner uh, has certainly abandoned uh, three uh, sanyojana, three fetters, like belief in self, permanent self, doubt, and uh, attaining liberation by following rules and rituals. These are three fetters. He has abandoned. He has abandoned it when he was when he attained the stream entry. How can we say then that he has he has not abandoned uh, the lower fetters? So uh, because there is no noble person who has not attained who has not. Uh, destroyed th three of these lower fetters. Uh, so one can ask, uh, is, is it not the case that once you attain the stream entry has destroyed all these three fetters? So <clears throat> why is it said so? Because once returners have not abandoned the fetters of sensual lust and ill will. Uh, those are, the, even though they are lower fetters, they have not abandoned them. Not abandoned them. Therefore, the statement that they have not abandoned the lower fetters is said with reference to those fetters that they have not abandoned. So he has not abandoned all the lower fetters, abandoned only three of them. So this refers to the second, the person in, in the second level of enlightenment. Then the person, the number two person, abandoned the lower fetters, but not the fetters obtaining rebirth or the fetters obtaining existence. What does it mean? Uh, it refers to the person, although 
not abandon uh, the person has abandoned law of attest. That means three of the law of attest he has abandoned, but not the fetus for obtaining rebirth. That means he has not uh, destroyed uh, that uh, fetus that caused rebirth. What are the uh, the fetus that they cause that cause rebirth? That is uh, ill will, a desire. They still are there. And he has not abandoned the, uh, the fetters of existence. So he is the second person, one bound upstream, heading towards the Akanitha realm. This is the second person. That means Anagami. This person has abandoned the lower fetters, but not the fetters of obtaining rebirth and fetters obtaining action. So his Akanita uh, the one who heading up the Akanita uh, is for uh, five Anagamis. Five Anagamis. They are Upahatya Paranibhai Asankara Parnibhai, Upahantya Parnibhai, Antara Parnibhai, Asankara Parnibhai, Sasankara Parnibhai, Uddhan Sot Akanitika. That means Upahantya Parnibhai, one who is more intellectual nature, uh, with more wisdom, with Akacharita in, in Pali, a uh, wisdom-oriented person, even though he could not attain uh, full enlightenment very quickly, as he has been practicing uh, meditation, practicing jhana, uh, his all sadha, virya, sati, samadhi, panya, all are fully matured, and then he suddenly dies. Then, because of his uh, uh, wisdom uh, of Panya, he has seen uh, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, selflessness. Uh, he has overcome his uh, uh, greed and so forth. Since he has prepared all this background for attainment of enlightenment, uh, even though he could not attain this in the enlightenment in his very life, because of the practice, as soon as he died, as soon as he is reborn in one of the pure abodes, pure abodes is uh, uh, those five, as I mentioned, Aviha, Atapa, Sudasa, Sudasi, Akanit, Aviha. As soon as he was in Aviha, Aviha, Brahma realm, that very moment he attains full enlightenment. That is called Uppahatya Paranibhai. And there is another person, Antara Paranibhai, the person uh, from, if he, if he is not very intellectual, very wise, uh, he is very uh, hard working, practicing more diligently, uh, he makes a lot of effort, uh, very, he's, he is, uh, he doesn't mind working very hard. And then he will attain the enlightenment uh, between uh, Aviha and Atapa. Before he reach Atapa in between, he, he will attain, because he has only practicing, has been practicing, so attain full enlightenment. That is called Antara Parnibhai. This also uh, reject the belief that there is Antara Bhava. 
antara bhava. Uh, there is a controversy over this. That means that is after uh, your death, before you take rebirth, there will be intermediate period. It is called intermediary state, which Theravada Buddhism denies, rejects. This is evidence that antara parinibhai, <coughs> and also in uh, Dhammapada we say uh, upaniyata, uh, uh, yeah, upaniyata, yeah, what do you call it? Upaniyata, jivitamapma, jarupanasana, jarupanasana, santitana. When, I uh, know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, nati antara. Uh, nati antara means no antara bhava. That means intermediary state of existence does not exist. This is this is one place that it is denied. Another place we can see in the Dhammapada. Uh, it doesn't occur to me right now, but if I remember before my before I end the talk, I'll mention it. Anyway, then that is the second anagami. He is uh, effort oriented. He is energetic. Third is antaraparne upahatiparne antaraparne sasankar parnibhai asankar parnibhai. That means he doesn't have to make. Uh, too much effort after that, after he is born in uh, uh, Avya Atapa, uh, Sudhasa. Uh, before he attained the Sudhasa uh, Brahma realm, uh, because of his uh, work, he doesn't need too much work, uh, too additional work. That's called Asankar Parna. Asankar means work, uh, activities making effort, meditating, preparing, all these are called uh, sasankara, sankara. But he doesn't have to do any of these things because his previous practice was so strong and powerful and now clear and not as clear as the first or second, but uh, clear. So he attained full enlightenment. Fourth is sasankara. If that person has little more defilements, residues like uh, asmiman and so forth, little bit, it is indefinably subtle, uh, almost imperceptible, and yet they, they are that kind of uh, notion of asmimana is still there. And therefore, he has to make little effort. Then that's called the sasankara. And then uddang sota kanitagami. The fifth person needs more work, and he will stay in the highest pure abodes. There may be many of them even now. This moment, there may be many anagamis in the highest Brahma realm, highest pure abode. Don't, don't ask me where they are. Uh, I simply know from uh, text, from uh, learning, that there are these uh, the fact that I don't see and don't experience doesn't mean that they don't exist. I simply have not uh, experienced it, that's all. So this is the uh, kind of uh, individuals that mentioned in this category. In the second category, kind of anagamis, five kind of anagamis. Then, what kind of person has abandoned the lower fetters 
and the fetus for obtaining rebirth, but not the fetus for obtaining existence. One who attains final nibbana in the in the interval, I said antarapar nibbai, that is the person. In the in the interval, this person has abandoned the lower fetus, and the fetus for obtaining rebirth. That means uh, rebirth in gross form, but not fetters so obtaining existence. He still exists in that highest uh, realm, as what you call Suddhavasa. Then the fourth person is the kind of person who has abandoned the lower fetters, the fetters for obtaining rebirth, the fetters for obtaining existence. Who is this person who has destroyed all the fetters? I think you can guess the answer. That is Arahant. Arahant. So these are the four kinds of persons. So Buddha disclosed that. And then uh, I like to spend a few more minutes talking about a uh, uh, few other persons, four persons, uh, four persons, one whose discernment is uh, indecisive, but not free from flowing. Uh, that is, uh, no, eh, not indecisive, in, uh, uh, in, uh, not in, he firm, his firm. Discernment is firm, but not free flowing. One whose discernment is free from flowing, but not firm. One whose discernment is both decisive, uh, firm, and free from flowing, and one whose discernment is neither in neither firm, nor free from flowing. That means they are, they, uh, their existence is uh, uh, the, the, uh, very, that also explains the uh, kind of uh, uh, practice and achievement firm and not firm uh, for persons. And there are another other four kind of person. This is also very important to remember. We often mention that is uh, uh, one who understands quickly, one who understands through elaboration, one who needs to be guided, one for whom the words is the maximum. That is uh, a kind of, uh, four kind of persons we very often uh, talk about. Okay? Uh, Okay. They are called uh, as important uh, understand uh, four kind of person. The first person is called Uggati Tanya. You remember when Bodhisattva, uh, Prince Siddhartha Bodhisattva, went to Alara Kalama, Uddhaka Ramaputta, and there he said, uh, as soon as he heard the word, Otta uh, Pahata Mattena, Lapita Lapita Mattena. 
when they mention the attainment of vijnana uh, jayatana nevasanyana sanyasana so forth as soon as they utter this word siddha the boys are understood very quickly before their their lips were closed he understood as soon as the lips are uh, you know tried to taste express these words the kind of attainment he understood very quickly that is the kind of persons called ugghati ugghati means ugghati ugghati means you know coming in contact as soon as the person comes in contact with the dhamma that very instant the person immediately understand dhamma just like kondanya and so forth you, you heard this stories then uh second person is a little um, slower he is called one who understand through elaboration he needs little more time uh uh because his uh, his spiritual faculties are not very uh, sharp so he would yield the choice between uh first one and second one the, the difference is this one between them this person needs more uh, elaboration uh the person of quick not with the sharp witted person um and therefore this person needs some explanation that person is uh, uh that person needs more guidance uh ipanchitanya nyaya nyaya means leading uh, guiding uh he needs uh, uh what you call for listening to them associating with kalyan mitra mindfulness sati sampajanya and uh, and so forth all these four qualities that one need uh yonisa manasikara uh kalyan mitra uh, and then uh Uh, constant practice uh, and so forth he needs uh, to attain enlightenment that is the and and uh, the first kind of person is the call uh, he is he will be emancipated by pleasant practice and quick direct knowledge pleasant practice and quick direct knowledge in pali called sukha patipada khippa bhinya sukha patipada khippa bhinya his practice is very pleasant attainment is very quick that is the first kind of person second person is uh, attainment of uh, you know enlightenment uh, either by painful practice and uh, uh, quick direct knowledge or by present practice and sluggish direct knowledge that is uh, uh, dukha patipada khippa bhinya dukha patipada danda bhinya dukha patipada danda bhinya that is vipanchitanya nyaya uh vipanchitanya that is second kind of person third kind of person nyaya nyaya person uh is with uh, 
attainment of liberation is uh, painful. Practice is very sluggish. Attainment is very painful. Practice is very sluggish, slow. Uh, Dukkha Patipada Dandha Binya. These are the three types of persons. There is one more person. <laughs> that is called Adha Parama. I think I mentioned this Padda Parama. Padda Parama uh, is word is the para, paramount. Parama means paramount. He he likes words, phrases, ideas, reading, writing, discussing, arguing, all his life. Very intellectual. Not wise. <laughs> he's, scholar, he's a scholar. More he learns, more he likes to talk, discuss, write, and so forth. And Bahum Pache Sahitam Bahasmano Natakaro Sitaro Savapamatu Gopo Gao Ganea Pareza Nabagua Samacha Hosi. He learns, his learning is enormous like encyclopedia, but it doesn't put them into practice. Therefore, it does not attain full enlightenment in this very life. That is uh, the kind of person. And there are, <laughs> I like to mention few more kind of people. Uh, Uh, this this person, this kind of people, uh, uh, they have. Uh, there are four other kinds of people. One who lives off the fruit of his effort. He makes effort, and bear the fruit, and. Ben benefit from his uh, practice, practice karma. This person who passes the day energetically and exerting himself and lives off whatever he gains as the uh, consequential fruit of this, but does not obtain any uh, meritorious fruits as a result of his exertion. He exert, he, he experienced the benefit of exerting, but does not achieve the fruit of liberation. Even stream and he works very hard. Another person, one who lives of the fruit of karma, but not of the fruit of effort. The, he, he, he enjoys the fruit of his previous lives. Previous life he has done a lot of meritorious deeds. In this life he lives on, this, uh, on the benefit of this merit. That is, uh, you have uh, an account, so you use it and use up and you don't earn new. Uh, you don't commit new wholesome commas. Once those uh, uh, wholesome state uh, benefits are exhausted, you will be empty, your account is empty, then you have to start all over again. And then uh, there are some, and one who lives of the fruit of karma but not of the fruit of effort. It doesn't make new effort. And they are some of the devas and heavenly beings. They are, they are enjoying the uh, wholesome benefit of wholesome karma that they have committed in this life. 
and they don't do any other because they are so busy enjoying, 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 no time for Dhamma, practice meditation. Once their uh, merit is over, they will be back again on the lower place, in lower place. One who lives of the fruit of both his effort and come, his karma. So the fourth person lives of his previous karmas benefit and commit more wholesome karmas now. Those are the person who can end their samsaric life. That means those who have done they are, these are the people who are born with three wholesome roots. Aloba, Adosu, Amoha. And as they were born with these three wholesome roots, they not only enjoy the benefit of their previous karmas, but also they learn, even though I am enjoying the, pre the benefit of previous karmas now, I still uh, have suffering. I still can continue my uh, samsaric existence. I am subject to birth, decay, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. And therefore, I must, even though these, these are wonderful, beneficial, pleasant, uh, making me happy, I can enjoy. As Prince Siddhartha said uh, in his Arya uh, Pariyasana Sutta, being subject to all this, death, and so forth, why should I uh, get another person uh, to do to experience the same thing. I want to end this. So, like him, like many others, like Ratrapala and so forth, they enjoy pleasure, and then they were not obsessed with the pleasure. They understand this pleasure is impermanent, and then it will exhaust if I don't end this life, this uh, existence. Uh, then I will be reborn again. So they practice more and more. Practice the Noble Eightfold Path and uh, end their karma, samsaric karma, which brings them to exist in samsara. So remember, friends, our karma, exhausting karma, karma, destroying karma is called Noble Eightfold Path. Remember, I repeat this many times. If you, uh, if somebody asks you, what should we do? What is the karma that ends karma? That is the no practice Noble Eightfold Path. When you practice Noble Eightfold Path, that definitely ends our suffering ends our karma. Karma, suffering, living are synonymous. Karma, life, living, all are synonymous. And we want to end this uh, vicious cycle. In order to end it, this is the practice. That is, practice the noble Eightfold path. With these friends, I want to end today's talk, and I hope you all uh, benefited. Some part of this is little uh, not clear, but if you pay total attention and if you recall your knowledge of Dhamma, and you can make the reference. And I gave a lot of talks on these topics. And uh, I want to end this talk today and have a wonderful day. And now we want to meditate, do meditation. Okay. Okay. Where is this? Okay. Hmm. 
Can you see the screen? Hmm? Not yet. No, but uh, I'm trying to find out. Uh, so where to open it? Jamal? But they can share the screen? Yeah. Samar, can you come? Ah, oh. right, 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 right. right. Okay, let us begin our metta recital. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Mm -hmm. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long or large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so to her soul living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or in a bed. One should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, let us meditate for at least uh, 20 minutes. Okay?
by means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. This is the end of today's session. And <clears throat> we want to share marriage with all beings. May all those who are in hospitals suffering from various diseases may they recover soon and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May those doctors, nurses, and hospital staff who take care of these people also find time to practice the meditation and liberate from samsaric suffering. May those who have lost their loved ones and are grieving May they be free from grief and practice the meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in trouble, sports, war, sword, poverty, stigmatic area, discriminations, and so on, may they all find time to practice Dhamma, understand the Dhamma, nature of Dhamma, nature of life and practice meditation and attain liberation. All those who are in eastern direction, northeastern direction, northern direction, north the western direction, western direction, north south west direction, southern direction, and southeast direction up and down. All those who are in 10 different directions, be well, happy, and peaceful, and finally attain Nibbana. That's Tomorrow we have our questions and answer period at 10 o'clock in a different location. Perhaps our uh, background will not be the same. Uh, so anyway, we will have it tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And uh, also we wish to have uh, uh, tomorrow evening Dhammapada uh, lesson and those who would like to enjoy uh, join that may join it and we see you tomorrow again. Have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Sadhu. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante.